I'm Michelle Boisvenue Fox, and I'm the director of Mesa County Libraries. I have worked in libraries since I was 14 years old. As a teen, I did not want to work in the mall. I did not want to work in a fast food joint, and I still don't. <laughs> you could say that libraries hooked me on early. I have a picture of myself carrying an oversized carrot from story time at the library that I got the distinct pleasure of doing. I was very privileged. And my mom took the photo of me. I'm about four years old. And in it, you can see I have orange yarn bows. Some of you did not even know that orange yarn bows existed, but indeed they did in the 70s. I attended puppet shows, pet shows, even folk singer, folk singer Carol Johnson sing-along, and I can still ling, sing Love Grows to you if you ask me today. What hooked me early on when I was working in libraries was the work of librarians and the way they were changing lives. On the surface of it, it looked like they were just helping people find titles and needed information. But they were changing lives. They were learning people's names so they could greet them as they came in to visit the library. They were having conversations with them long after the business of finding their titles was over. They were building relationships. The patrons were learning from the staff, and the librarians were learning from the patrons. They were, they were showing me the importance of people in libraries. Libraries have been quiet. Once upon a time, there were no computers in libraries. There was no internet. This is strange to think nowadays, because I don't know about you, but I can hardly get along without my smartphone. It's very addicting, for sure. But is this old place, that were, that were magical places when I was younger, but they're game changers now. So for the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to take that old image that you might have from movies, or from your own youth, and take it from your head and put it in your heart. And just keep it there for a minute. I need to talk to you about a more realistic image of a public library. It is undoubtedly true that when I'm out in the communities talking about the library or doing community presentations, people will always tell me, I didn't know the library did that. And it's true. You might think that the internet and ebooks decimated libraries. But I still have a job, a life's passion, and we still welcome everyone to the library every day. So I'd like to start today and take you a tour of my library. You come to our library, and our parking lots are full. You come in the library, I have a two-level library, and all the seats are full. People are reading magazines, newspapers, books on their devices, working on laptops. In the kids' area, parents are filling book bags with books while their kids play educational games. The puppet theater is ready for an afternoon program. Our teen space is also quiet, but it's ready for the activity that it will see after school when the teens come in. They like to be together. They will play trivia games, they play video tournaments, and sometimes craft programs as well. There are people in the library searching for books, perusing displays, talking to librarians, and making copies. A volunteer in the book sale area is greeting people. Others are in line to talk to staff about their accounts or get a library card. Others are checking out books at our kiosks. Our kids get to do this sometimes, too, and they're really good at it. Downstairs, our GE students are working with a tutor in a study room. People are sitting, charging phones. Computers are half full. Other study rooms are too, but that'll change later in the afternoon. Over at the recording studio, our staff are getting some equipment ready for an afternoon reservation so that they know that it works and is ready to go. Our artist studio stands empty and clean, ready for our next artist in residence, whose focus will be on animation. And they've just put up a display highlighting their upcoming programs in the main library. Outside our studio, our community garden is dormant. Although we've just built a hoop house, some volunteers did, ready for spring, and some paths have been laid, paid for by a grant. If you can imagine this, then you are seeing the most diverse place in our library. This is a community space. Everyone comes to the library. It is because of this that libraries fulfill an important social component, social connection. Social connection is a top determinant to a long life. 
It's really important. We all need this. People must not be invisible. Side note, I wouldn't be a librarian if I didn't push at least one book title on you. So I am recommending Palaces for the People by Eric Klinenberg. The title is a reference to an Andrew Carnegie quote. It is inspirational for the title of this presentation. Klinenberg beautifully makes the case for social connection in libraries and other community places. Here's how social connection happens at my library. Every day we meet people new to the community. And after they get their state ID or state license, they come to the library to get a library card. That's how important it is to them. They ask about programs, especially things like book clubs, so they can meet people. They want to learn about the community. They want to make connections. The library is important to them. Every day, our story times offer opportunities for parents to meet one another. They begin these relationships at the program, talking about their children, advice, developmental milestones, just laughing. Sometimes after the program, they'll go out for coffee, or they'll even just stay later extra to let the kids play while the parents talk. It actually is not unusual for me to hear stories from adults that these friendships last long after these children grow up and go away to college. That's the importance of connection. Everyday people come to the library to seek out staff, ask questions, follow up on another visit. They get to know staff through attending programs, maybe on genealogy research or local history or even technology. Some people don't get a smile anywhere else in their day. Not while they're running errands, not at the doctor's office, maybe not even at home. But at the library, they do. One of my favorite interactions that shows a library is a crossroads is when people run into each other at the library. They may know each other as former coworkers, former neighbors, their kids may have grown up together. But they run into each other and they catch each other up on their lives. They're making a connection. I neglected one area of my library, but it's important to mention. One of our entrances is full of small tables underneath an art gallery. You will find people using their laptops and charging their phones. You will also find our population who don't have homes. They are veterans. They may have mental health issues, maybe even addiction. They sleep outside. They're hungry and tired. This hallway can be intimidating to many people. People choose where they work, where they live, where they shop, and where they worship. So they can avoid this population largely. But remember, everyone's welcome at the library. This group needs social interaction, and they need to be included. I think about it this way. If I didn't have a home, I would want to spend my entire day at the library surrounded by books. Libraries create space for social connection. We get out into the community. We work with over 60 over organizations, building relationships with them. What happens if we don't have social connection, though, and instead are stuck with isolation? Do you think about this? Do you see it? We see it when we visit individuals for our Words on Wheels delivery service. This is a library service available to people who cannot come to the library to get library materials. So we bring it to them. And staff are encouraged to visit people on these visits. What we hear from our staff are people who want conversation. They will tell staff their memories, what's happening with their family, how their health is going that week, they look forward to our staff coming. In fact, if the staff happen to get a promotion at the library or leave the library for another position, we hear about it. There's a lot of sadness when those drivers move on. I think our staff get as much out of these visits as, we, as they do. So I want to talk about some special programs that we have at the library that also create connection. Our Dog Ears program is offered at libraries around the country in some form or another. It's a partnership with local therapy dog program where dogs are certified to work with people. You might be sitting in the audience wondering what this has to do with a library. It's simple, really. For new readers who are learning to read and gaining confidence, reading to a dog is a beautiful thing, because dogs do not correct your pronunciation. <laughs> Children come to the library, they pick out books, sign up for a slot, and sit and read to dogs. And it's not unusual during that happens for the child to reach over and pet their dog. A handful of years ago, our library held an event at the library for National Comic Book Day. This day honors those who love comics and those who create and make comics. 
the event went a little too well. <laughs> the library was completely overrun by patrons. And I can imagine the staff looking at each other a little shocked, going, oh, what did we hit on? We now have a comic book convention, Comic Book Comic Con. It is now in its fifth year. This year, it attracted close to 6,000 people at our local convention center. These people really like being together. They have this common interest. At the convention, we offer sessions, informational sessions, costume contests, and vendors sell their, their comic-related material. At this year's costume play, also called Cosplay, we had a 1920s flapper Wonder Woman called a mashup. We had a family that came dressed as the Incredibles. And we had a teen who came as a zombie bride who used Hollywood makeup magic to sew her lips shut. The other thing this illustrates is that librarians get people. At this year's holiday parade, the library had an entrance and staff were walking alongside the float. We were getting a lot of library love. Really, I think people just wanted our candy. But there was a group of teens that, as we were going by, yelled loudly enough for me to hear, these are the people that get me. Wow. This is a group that can be invisible, can be overlooked in our community, but they recognize that they are not invisible to us. This is the group that one day soon will rule the world, and I just hope that we get catch a few of them in our hook to work in a library. A second event, the library annual event we have, is our annual Culture Fest. In its 11th year, this event attracts more than 2,000 patrons to the library. Each culture represented in our community has a table at this event where they have information about the country as well as food. There's also entertainment, dancing, and music related to the culture. People will comment to me that they didn't realize we had all these cultures in our community. It's a beautiful piece of connection. Earlier, I mentioned our studio space, which is unique for libraries. The library offers classes on using the software to edit your work, also classes on how to use the equipment so you can record your own things, videos, spoken word tracks. The original intent was to provide something to local artists where they didn't have to pay for the equipment themselves or pay for professional services. What has resulted is a community of people coming together, learning together, and sharing with each other. And I also make note that this is also a group that doesn't typically use the library otherwise. I mentioned earlier about a group of students meeting with an instructor on the GED. Our library offers GED prep classes. We also pay for GED tests through grants. We have career online high school, citizenship classes, and learning English. I spoke at a recent graduation and was joined by the students who shared their stories. They were heartfelt, genuine, and very emotional. Their stories are ravaged by circumstance and by past decisions. The library gets to play a hand in changing their path, and I'm very proud of that. Some of them are going into law enforcement, teaching, and opening their own beauty salon. The library is full of stories. The libraries do this work every day. We want to be part of the community's successes in solving the hard problems. All of this activity is contained within and outside our walls. When I was a child in my orange yarn bows and my pigtails, I never foresaw my future in the library. Honestly, I really just had fun one day finding the door to the story time room unlocked, inviting all the other children in the kids' area in to run around and cause a ruckus. This meant the librarians also had to run in order to stop our naughtiness. Sadly, I only found that door unlocked the one time. <laughs> I stand before you today to make the case that libraries build community. We connect with people. We connect people to each other. Our staff are on committees all over the community so we can contribute to solve community issues like homelessness, mental health issues, suicide prevention. We work hard, and we do it because we love our communities. Libraries are still worth their weight in gold. They still need your continued support. They are still important places. So how can you love your library? Get a library card. Vote. Donate money to your library. 
serve on a library board, volunteer at your library. Working alongside you, libraries can continue to build community. Thank you.